What is up my friends? You are very welcome along to today's Anfield Agenda News Roundup. Over the next 8-10 to 10 minutes, I'm going to be taking you guys through the release of Liverpool's new home shirt and why the prices have been jacked up. We're going to be talking about two players who could be on their way to the Anfield exit door and a possible inclusion to this summer's list of transfer targets. That and much more over the next few minutes, but I want to start off with a little interesting story. You've probably seen it doing the rounds on social media. Apparently, Manchester City are lashing out a load of warning letters, shall we say, to content creators and other outlets to try and get them to stop talking about the 115 charges. We haven't yet received one. If we have, make no mistake, I will sit here and read it out to you in its entirety. But um, it again is just another indication to me of Manchester City trying to throw their weight around. We'll see how this all pans out over the course of the next few months. Until then, let's get stuck into today's news stories. And starting off with the release of Liverpool's new home shirt for the upcoming campaign. Uh, abomination is the word that comes to my mind. It's so ugly that I don't even want to bring it up on screen. I'm sure you've already seen it. But what I do want to bring you guys up to date with is a price increase on it. So James Pierce of The Athletic was mentioning this, and this is what he said. The standard adult shirt is up 6.7% from £74.99 to £80. The youth jersey, that's up even higher, 9.2% up to £60 from £55. But the real kick in the nuts here is the inference kit. It is now up a whopping 15.7% from £44.95 to an incredible £52 sterling. That is ridiculous. Now, Liverpool have been quick to point out that it's down to Nike cranking up the prices and that they are selling the shirts below Nike's recommended retail price. I mean, be honest, it doesn't really matter what Liverpool say about it. They're Liverpool's chosen partners, so kicking the can down the road doesn't make any excuse, really. It's still Liverpool that partnered up with Nike and it is Liverpool's name on that shirt, so... In my opinion, it's just another good indication of why we should get away from Nike, who have copy and paste kits and are now trying to more than fleece customers for jerseys that just simply aren't worth the money, in my opinion. So, we interested to know your thoughts on that one. Do you agree with the price hike? And do you buy Liverpool's, I guess, excuse making that Nike are the ones jacking up the price? So, my friends, next one up, I want to talk about a couple of players who have been linked with a move away from Liverpool. But before I do, a little bit of good news. Connor Bradley has today returned to Liverpool training as well. Obviously, that should hopefully put him in contention for the game against Spurs at the weekend. And we'll be putting our preview out tomorrow for that game so do keep an eye out for it hopefully should be out at about six o'clock tomorrow evening so yeah good news that Connor Bradley is back training now I did say that it wasn't all good news today in fact we started off with a price increase we then went on to speak about the fact that or well before that Manchester City were thrown at legal letters but now a little bit more bad news I'm afraid Sam Maguire posted today to say exclusive Joe Gomez is weighing up his options this summer the versatile defender is open to leaving Liverpool now, I don't know if this was something Joe Gomez already had in mind. I, I don't know if this is definitely true, but Sam reporting it gives us a jumping off point to speak about it. And what I wonder is, with the links to Gertruda, is Joe Gomez thinking, well, he may come in and fulfil my role in the club, which is basically to be uh, a backup, to be a right back, a centre back or a defensive midfielder at times. Or was this something that Joe Gomez was concerned about anyway? Look, I hope we don't lose Joe. I really do appreciate the versatility he's brought to the squad this year. And I hope that he doesn't move on. Um, if he can stay fit, we know what an asset Joe Gomez can be. So let's hope that there is no truth to this one, but certainly one that we should keep an eye on over the coming days and weeks. Now, Paul Gorst has posted to say, uh, there are some around the AXA training centre who have openly discussed the prospect of Luis Diaz departing this summer. No surprises here, really. Certainly not. Uh, compared to Joe Gomez, who did take me by surprise when I read Sam's story on that one. But we all know that it looks like Lucho has eyes for Spain. You know, he's spoken, his father has spoken about his want to go and play for Barcelona someday. And I don't know if the Catalan side have the money to come in and try to buy Lucho. But I would say the same as I've said all along. I don't want to lose Lucho. I think he's a good player. But I also don't want somebody at the club who doesn't want to be here. Liverpool is no stepping stone club. It is a destination club. So if Lucho really does want to leave, then 
I just hope Liverpool get as much as they can for him and he goes because I don't want players who don't want to be at the club. I do appreciate him. I do really like his work rate and effort. But as I said, I'm very strong about these type of things. If you don't want to be at Liverpool, then off you pop, find another club and you will soon figure out that the grass usually is not always greener on the opposite side. So let's see what happens with Lucho. Can his agent find a club willing to pay what Liverpool would ask? Again, keep an eye on the situation. It isn't all bad news, though. I do finish today with a possible good news story. Uh, and this comes in, again, from ESPN this time, or at least one of the correspondents who say, Liverpool have been credited with an interest in Crystal Palace's Michael Alise, particularly if Mohamed Salah were to leave and they can offer him Champions League football. Manchester United are considered front runners. I would agree with that. Certainly a lot of what I've read has suggested that Manchester United are further down the progression of looking into Michael Elise. I think, again, open to be corrected on this, but I think Elise is credited before as the saying he was a Manchester United fan. Not that that really makes all that much difference in these things, but I've got to be honest, if we did lose Mohamed Salah, I'd have no problems with Michael Elise. Uh, if he ends up at United, I'm not going to backtrack like I have previously. If I if I say somebody's a good player, I believe they're a good player. And Elise is somebody that I think many of us would quite happily see in a Liverpool shirt. You would have to take into account the injuries that he's had this season. And when you have an explosive player like Elise starting to pick up hamstring injuries, that does concern me. Because if these type of players lose that explosiveness, then a big part of their game is gone. So if he's starting to have these struggles early... I would suggest that it's something Liverpool's medical team would certainly look deeper into before agreeing to a move. But just from a fur uh, purely football perspective, look, I really like Michael Elise and I think I think most of us would, would welcome a Liverpool football club. What this article hasn't done is mention uh, a figure. I think there is another release clause in his deal. I know the last one was triggered last year by Chelsea, I think it was. He did want to make the move. City were interested as well, if my memory is correct. So I would expect it to be a fairly significant fee, but he is a really, really good young up-and-coming player and somebody that I think is ready to make that next step from Crystal Palace to a big club, even if that big club is a bit of a less big club in Manchester United. Sorry, United fans, but I had to do it for you. So look, we have Champions League football to offer him. What do you think it would take to get Michael Elise to Liverpool? And indeed, do you think Michael Elise would be good enough for Liverpool Football Club? Looking forward to reading your responses to all of these and don't forget most of these stories you can find with a quick search online as well if you're watching this earlier in the day I will be back tonight at half past day for the late night agenda where we'll go through these and many more stories over the course of 90 minutes appreciate you guys tuning in hope you guys have a wonderful Thursday and again don't forget tickets are on sale for a Belfast show as well the link is in the description Cardiff and Liverpool will be going on sale later this month until then my friends I will catch up with you soon have yourselves a wonderful Thursday and thank you for watching bye bye